government and what we do is governance. So governance is nothing new. Right from Kautilya Sartha Shastra, we've been doing it. So what one must understand is that government is a very, very huge and crazy creature. It's big, it's messy, it's complicated. It's like a gigantic clock, if you can take the analogy of a clock. There are too many parts, too many levers, constantly working, interdependent, interconnected. So there is any breakage in one system, you know, it affects surrounding systems. And there is a lot of interaction from outside. It requires operation and maintenance. It, re it requires recharging, rejuvenation. So that is where government comes in. It is an open system, you know, and uh, so many times it is uncertainties are there. Uh, predictability, even though we want to bring in predictability, like uh, Sir was mentioning, you know, so many times it is still unpredictable. And when we make decisions, it's not that it, not in the ideal situation, right? So that is the climate and environment in which we are operating. So just to talk about uh, e-governance in government, again, Atik Sir has spoken a lot about, you know, citizen service delivery and use of technology in decision making. So let me give you a broad framework of the areas of e-governance and uh, digitization in government. So one is, as you all know, citizen services delivery, which uh, Panwar sir and uh, uh, Mamta madam were speaking about, even Atik sir spoke about. So citizen service delivery, as in citizens want services from government, we have to offer those services in the most efficient way, try to be as faceless as possible so that there is no kind of intervention in between, the so-called middleman we call, so that they can get it in a speedy manner, in a transparent manner, and also without paying any uh, bribes. So directly the transaction happens. So that is where we have multiple platforms. Like I think Dilesh will talk about Seva Sindhu. And uh, in RDPR department, we have the Bapuji Seva Kendra offering rural development panchayati raj services like uh, payment of property tax, uh, trade license issue and renewal, issue of property documents, and a host of many other services. So the services are created, and uh, it is not necessary just to create the service online and keep it. Because when I specifically talk about the rural landscape and uh, all over the country, the potential for e-governance is immense. And uh, many times we think that you know technology only works in the urban centers. Not at all true. Adoption of technology, low-cost technology in India, I think is much, much better than many developed countries also. Our uh, use of online payment through UPI and all that. So I think India is ready and willing, but again, technology should not become a barrier or, you know, with lack of access, hardware, software, networking. So we have to ensure that, of course, we are offering services, but we have to keep the system ready. Second one is for internal governance, review and monitoring. Uh, Panchatantra too that Atik sir was talking about is all about, you know, uh, streamlining this kind of internal governance. Uh, most of the time when I talk to people, I say that, you know, we send out a data sheet asking uh, districts and taluks for uh, their progress on various parameters and whatever data they send, we review them on that data. So, of course, you know, we need to have it real time. We need to have it analyzed. Data and analytics and visualization, I think, is a very, very big field that the government needs and it is already working with. Uh, planning and works monitoring. Let me quickly give a small example of what we are doing in the planning uh, department in uh, RDPR department in the planning section. Uh, I had Narega, uh, which is also called the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. So essentially it provides, we provide 100 days of manual labor to any family in rural areas that are willing to work. Also we give individual benefits and all that. Uh, mainly it was started to avoid uh, outward migration from rural areas looking for work and uh, create livelihood opportunities. It has also become a, a tool for creating uh, rural assets. So. Uh, Narega is a large scheme, around 7,000 to 7,500 crore we spend on Narega in Karnataka. Out of that, 65% of the works that we do should belong to the natural resource management category. So what are these works? These are works related to water conservation, soil conservation, you know, plantation and all that. Identification of these works was a major challenge because like Atik sir was mentioning, we have around 5,962 panchayats, we have 5,962 annual plans. So this kind of follow-up was, it was more of a political decision and elite capture. So we are using uh, extensively geospatial tools, you know. Uh, Government of India, this is controlled by Ministry of Rural Development. So there is a portal called Geomanrega, Bhuvan, all of you must be knowing. So all the completed works are available there. 
and also how to select work depending on the soil, the region, you know, the nature of the soil, the rainfall conditions, climatic conditions, what sort of structure should be done where and exactly when. So this is something we are bringing into planning. I can go on and on, but I think uh, already <laughs> you're looking at your words. So geospatial planning is something which is very, very important. I think usage of geospatial tools in governance for decision making, for planning, uh, participatory as well as geospatial is something which is we are ready to go and already we are integrating. Uh, in Karnataka, we are doing something called Jalasan Jeevini. Maybe more on that later. And transparency of data decisions and information and uh, government has to be accountable so definitely, you know, we have RTI right to information. So we don't have to wait for people to come and give us, you know, RTI queries. We have to publish information which is easily available. So for that transparency parameters also, we need a lot of, uh, you know, digital platforms and everything. I think in a nutshell, I tried to cover too much. I have more about it later. Yeah, thank you.